All right, what is going on guys? So this week we are gonna be back on some kayak stuff. We're gonna take a break from the rooftop tent stuff, the truck camper build and all that we've been doing lately. And we're gonna focus on my DIY solo trailer that we built here on the channel a couple of years ago. I've just picked up the Yakima Topwater box. Can y'all see it over here? This bad boy right here. And we're gonna be adding it to this trailer today. I've got an idea in mind, I've been out here kind of mocking it up, and I'm gonna show you guys on the whiteboard before we start cutting metal and welding in a minute, how I'm gonna weld this up on the trailer today. But I've gotten tired of having to load and unload my rod bundle into the cab of my truck every time I go fishing. Everything else on my kayak is kind of rigged and ready to go at a moment's notice. It's always just my rods. I've always got to kind of rod sock all my rods, bundle them together, slide them into the cab of my truck, and then when I get to the river, I got to slide them back out. Having this rod box on my trailer, I'll be able to keep rods rigged here at the house and ready to go, keep them stored in the box right here in the garage. That way, when I'm ready to hook up and go fishing, I can just back the trailer up and go, hit the water. So I want to do it in a way though that it doesn't uh, hinder the way that I launch and load this kayak up. If you know me, you know that I load and unload this boat at the boat ramp just like I do a bass boat. I built this trailer so that it slides right off into the water and then when I load it up, I back the trailer into the water, slide it right back up on there just like a bass boat. I don't like being the guy at the bottom of the boat ramp that's holding up five guys at the top of the boat ramp waiting on me to get out of the way. I like to get down there, get my kite loaded or unloaded and get the heck out of everybody's way. So. I'm keeping that in mind when we're doing this build today. Let me, let's go to the whiteboard really quick. I'm gonna kind of draw up, show you my plans so that you kind of, as you're watching this video, you know why I'm welding certain brackets and posts and stuff like that in certain areas. And, and I think maybe if we've got time, I'm gonna weld on an extension to the trailer, like a little step area, just to give me a better place to stand on the trailer when I'm pulling the kayak on and off at the bottom of the boat ramp. So let me show you my plan really quick. And then we're gonna break out some steel and start cutting it and welding it. This is the stuff I'm gonna use. This is inch and a half square tubing, 14 gauge. I use it just about on all of my trailer builds when we do trailer builds. This stuff works really good for building brackets, shelves, stuff like that. Like today, we're gonna to be building a pretty high bracket to hold this top water box. And then we're probably gonna paint the trailer. And I'm thinking about swapping the wheels too. So by the end of the video, you know, I really like the ones that we put on that double kayak trailer that we just built here on the channel a few months back. If you didn't see that video, I'll link it right in here somewhere. You can click it and check it out. But I really like the wheels that we put on that one. And since I use this trailer more than that one, I think today's video, after we get it all built up and painted, I'm gonna swap over the wheels and put those gray and black ones or the gray and chrome ones on this trailer. But anyway, let me show you my plan and then we're gonna start cutting some metal. Uh, the lighting kind of sucks over here at this board, but I'm gonna draw big so that you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, so the trailer, so I'm gonna show you the top view really quick of how I'm gonna do it and the bottom view and why I'm not doing it because I'm sure a lot of you guys are gonna ask me, hey, why didn't you build it this way? I see a lot of people building it this way. I'm gonna try to cover it really quick. So here is the trailer and I'm not an artist, so I don't want to hear nothing in the comments. So here's my trailer, right? Got, this is a top view kind of, so you got your tires on both sides. The kayak sits right in the middle there. Let me see if I can draw my kayak really quick. All right, so there's where the kayak sits. I'm thinking, so the original plan, I'll show you what I was going to do before anything. The original plan was I was going to come up with two posts like this, and then we're going to go over the top of the kayak just above the seat, right? And then I was gonna put some lights up under these bars and then the top water box was gonna mount right above the kayak. Can y'all even see that? Yeah, y'all can see that. So I was gonna mount it right above the kayak and that was gonna work out pretty good except for one thing that I, I'm glad I thought about is whenever I rig my kayak up at the, at the boat ramp or above the boat ramp in the parking lot, you know, once I get there, I hook my motors up, I get my batteries situated. Once I'm doing that, I like to go ahead and stick all of my rods into my black pack, my yak attack box, all my rod tubes. So I get all my rods sticking straight up. I get my camera, my rear camera mounted up really high behind me. And with this box above the kayak like this, I wouldn't be able to stick my rods into the box sticking straight up. The, the actual rod box would be in the way. It would be blocking me from actually rigging. That means I would have to at the top of the ramp or somewhere in the parking lot, I would have to shift my kayak backwards on the trailer 
and then try to stick the rods in the, you know, everything on the back behind the rod box, which then I would have to be worried about backing down a ramp and my kayak sliding off the boat. I didn't want to deal with none of that. So here's the route we're going to go. I'm going to try to draw this bigger because I know that was very small. So here's the top view of the trailer. Let me show you. Here's the green machine right here. There's the kayak. So what I'm going to do, and I've also got to keep in mind that at the boat ramp, which side I want this rod box on, you don't, if you're launching by yourself, you don't want it on the driver's side of your trailer. You want it to be on the passenger side because when you get it in and out of your truck at the boat ramp, you want to be able to walk straight down to your kayak. You don't want to have to step over the front or walk around to get to the other side to load and unload. You want to be everything on the same side. So this is my driver's side, so we're not going to put anything on this side except for that step I told you guys about. I think I'm going to try to figure out a way to weld me up a step just, just give me somewhere to stand at the front of my trailer when I'm pulling the kayak on and off at the bottom of the boat ramp. But the passenger side is where we're gonna go. So we got our wheels here. There's a fender right there. I'm an artist. So we're gonna come off right here and we're just gonna go straight up the side. And I'm gonna come off the trailer probably even with the fender, the outside of the fender. I don't want this to be wider than the trailer is. I wanna keep that that width of the trailer, the fender wells, everything's still gonna be within that. And we're just gonna come off the trailer out to where the fender's in. I'm gonna come straight up and then we're gonna put a bar all the way across. And then that Yakima box is gonna mount right beside the kayak. And doing it this is, it does two things. Building it on the side like this lets me go lower because up here I was gonna have to be above the seat of my kayak, and that means I was gonna have to step up on the side of the trailer to get the rods in and out of the box. I didn't wanna deal with that. So now I'll be able to go low because this, the top water box is gonna be just above the side rail of my kayak. It's not gonna have to be above the seat. So I'll be able to drop that thing low enough that I'm gonna be able to walk up, unlock the box, get my stuff in and out, lock the box without climbing onto the trailer or climbing onto the kayak. So that's gonna be a plus for that. And it's gonna be on the passenger side of the truck, like I said, so we don't have to walk around. I'm not gonna have to deal with any of that. And there was another thing I was gonna do. What was it? Oh yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna do it yet. We're gonna see once we get to the point, once I've get some post welded up, but I may, I don't know why I'm, I'm stuttering to say this. I may build this at an angle. So if you go on Google and you look up these top water boxes, the guys that are putting them on these, uh, kayak trailers, they're welding them, they're mounting them kind of sideways at an angle. I may barely slightly do mine at an angle. And if I do that, I'll be able to, I know you're not gonna be able to see this on this board, but I'll be able to tilt it up just enough so the bars that are, are under it that we're gonna be welding to the trailer, I'm trying to draw them. These are gonna be under the box here. We might be able to incorporate some lights up under those two rails that are coming up to shine down on the boat, we'll put a little switch here on the trailer and be able to see to rig and unrig at the boat ramp, if that makes sense. Hopefully y'all got something out of that. That is the plan so far. So now all we gotta do is do this to this kayak trailer behind you guys. So I am going to, I'm probably not gonna film with this nicer camera because I am fixing to be slinging a bunch of sparks and metal and I'm gonna have the doors open. So I'm gonna switch to GoPros so the audio might be a little bit different here in a minute, but just bear with me. It's, I'm gonna do the best filming I can. I'll throw up some different GoPros and get some good shots for you guys. Kind of show you up close how I go about welding up these trailers and building brackets and stuff like this. And yeah, then we're just gonna go to it. But really quick, speaking of camera, uh, or the setup that I use. A lot of you guys ask about this new setup I got. What do you guys think about this new camera gimbal? So if I do this, I've got a almost like a professional guy behind the tripod here that will follow me around with my camera and it will record me the whole time. So this is nothing more than my regular Sony ZV-1 camera that I use to film these videos but my camera is mounted to a gimbal and it's called the Hohem, H-O-H-E-M is the brand name. Hohem, I think is how you pronounce it. And this is the MT2 camera gimbal. And it is amazing. I'm gonna have it linked in the video description. Watch this. I'm just gonna walk past, oh, 
So if I accidentally throw this hand up, it stops the tracking and I can move around, but I got to throw up the Gamecock symbol and now it will follow me until I accidentally did that again. <laughs> I got to stop doing that. So Gamecock symbol, put my hands down so I don't accidentally turn it off again. And as long as I keep it tracked on me, I can walk. See if y'all can follow me all the way around the building. I mean, all the way around my garage. What y'all think? How cool is this? So I'm gonna use this in today's video a lot. I've used it in the last video. If you've seen last week's video, I was able to use it out here a little bit. I kind of told you guys about it a little bit in that video, but I'm gonna have it linked in the video description below. It does way more than just this, guys, this thing. You can put any camera you want, and look, I put my hand up, so it stopped. I gotta, that's one thing I gotta remember, because the hand gestures is kind of how you control it. So if I do this, Gamecock symbol, can it see me? There you go, Gamecock symbol. I can walk around the room. What's really cool, if I'm not really centered onto the shot, I can do this and it will lock. And then once I center myself, like say if I want to be my head a little bit higher on frame and then I come back and let it grab me, now I have adjusted the, the angle of it. So now I can actually walk around. If I need to get something over here or show you guys something on this side of the shop, I can do that. If I want the angle to be a little bit different, I can do this. Pop it back up. Oh, now it's got a little bit more height above me. See how that works? It's really cool. It's the MT2 by Hoham. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's their, it's a gimbal, guys. If you're into filming at all, this thing is awesome. I also use it to get some really cool shots. If I'm panning over something, you can have, it's got like a nice grip on the handle and it keeps it nice and steady. You don't have any bouncing or jittering or anything like that. Very cool design, y'all check it out. If you're into filming or you're a YouTuber or whatever like me, this is a great tool to have in your bag. So anyway, shout out to Hohem. They sent me this gimbal, I absolutely love it. I'll have it linked with a promo code in the video description. Y'all go click it, go check it out, get you one of these things, they're very cool. And now let's get into slinging some sparks. So really before we can start cutting metal, I gotta have some measurements. So let's mock it up really quick and get some measurements. I got these old tripods that I'm gonna use. We can get it set up there. Just kind of mock it up. I wanna make sure that I have the right measurements going up because like I said, I want that box to be just above my controls here. So I got a steering control here. I've got my Newport Vessels NK300 throttle right here. I want the box to be just above that so that there's no in, you know, no danger of me hitting anything right here. So we'll come up probably right here. Plus that'll be the perfect height, I think. Let's set the box up here and see. And this thing ain't too heavy, really. Let's see. Set that there. Hopefully these little tripods will hold it. So I'm thinking something like this. All right, so I think I've got it figured out. I know that the box looks like it's at an angle right now because it is that front tripod. I can't get it adjusted without me dropping this whole box again. So I've got it kind of measured back here. And I think the plan is, is I'm gonna come off the trailer with this inch and a half square tubing. And instead of welding this directly to the trailer, I think I'm gonna drill holes and we're gonna come off right here at this cross member and then down at that cross member near that tripod. And I'm gonna drill holes and bolt this new addition. Once All of this will be welded on this side, but we're gonna have this so that it's removable. So in the future, if I ever wanna take this off, put it on a different trailer or just remove it all together, we'll be able to do that without having to cut welds and stuff like that. So, <coughs> excuse me. So I think what I'm gonna do is we're gonna bolt it to the trailer here and I think this is a good height back here, not up there. Like I said, I know it's at an angle, but it's hard for me to do this by myself in here. And I think 26 inches is gonna give us the right height we need. And the plan is, is once I come off this pole 26 inches, we're gonna do the same thing down there 26 inches. At that point, we get there, you know, once we get that part built, that's when I'm gonna decide if I want to put a slight angle into this box. I think I will do a slight angle, nothing dramatic, just barely tilted up. It'll make it look a little bit better than being just flat and it'll make it a little bit more accessible and uh, kind of kick it up further off of the 
inside of this kayak because I do want this over the kayak slightly over this side, but I don't want it low enough to be, if I've got anything sticking up when I'm loading and unloading, I don't want it to get in the way of uh, you know me hitting the box or, or knocking stuff off the kayak or anything like that. I wanted to get these measurements now because I am pulling the kayak off this trailer. I'm not gonna do any cutting or welding to this trailer with a kayak on it. I know you. some of you guys are like, hey man, I, you're gonna melt that kayak. I'm fixing to get it off. We're gonna put the kayak on the other side of the shop. I'm gonna move my floor mat and start mocking everything up, get it welded up. And then we can re-mock it up, put the box back up here and get the angles that we want just right from there. So, Oh, first I need to get this bad boy out of our way. We'll set it on top of the golf cart. <laughs> That should, that should have it out of the way. I've also got a video coming up. Uh, we're gonna be adding some cool stuff to this golf cart. If you remember last year, or maybe about a year and a half ago, uh, it's when I took this old 1990 Easy Go Marathon golf cart and it was dead and I converted it over and was turning it into, I think I called it the camping cart. So at campgrounds, we could ride it around. Well, I recently put a big lithium battery in this thing and it'll pop a wheelie, like this thing is nuts. But I've got a rear rack that I'm fixing to weld up for it. And I think I'm gonna make a video where we're gonna convert this a little bit more and get it more woods friendly so I can ride it around in the woods and stuff. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Y'all let me know if y'all wanna see that video. I just added a Prince roof rack to it, kind of off camera. And I'll show you all of that if I do the video coming up soon on uh, how we're gonna build that thing out and turn it into a, a cool little backyard build. But anyway, this video is not about that. This video, is about this kayak trailer. I don't know if y'all have ever, some, I mean, a lot of you guys have, if you follow me or you watch the channel at all, you know that I built that cart, my kayak cart right here, years ago. And so many of you guys have, you know, I, I put plans on that video on how to do this. And so many of you guys have built you one of these, but this is my kayak cart. And this is how I load and unload my kayaks onto trailers here in the garage. And I'll show you really quick how I do it. I don't have a ton of room in here, but I got just enough room. Hopefully that golf cart's not in the way now that I'm thinking about it. I, I got just enough room to load and unload a kayak on my trailer. I need to unhook it from the trailer first though, don't I? And we're gonna swap these straps out today too. Because one of them has already crapped out on me. Look at that, it lost track of me. I guess I turned my back. I'm right here, pick me up, there we go. I don't know if I put my hand up or if I just ran out of frame too fast. But anyway, what I was saying was these straps, we're gonna replace these because one of them has already crapped out on me. It won't retract anymore. And the other trailer build we did, I went with the bigger straps. We'll probably do that. Heck, I might even just rob a set of straps off the other trailer for this build video and just replace them, you know, buy new ones for the other trailer. Since I do use this one the most, but I'm supposed to be able to push this button and this retract, but they kind of quit doing that. And I don't like that. I mean, look at that, that one, they both crapped out. So neither one of them are retracting now. So we're fixing to take those off and redo them. I mean, if, I, if they won't retract, I might as well just have two eye bolts and a regular ratchet strap to go in there. But check this out. This is how you can load and unload a kayak by yourself. And I only put swivel casters on one end of this thing, so you can kind of control it a little bit better. But some people like putting the swivel casters on both ends. What I do is I push it right there and you can chalk these back wheels, but I can usually just get it going without chalking anything. Ugh, come on. And this kayak is not light by no means, but Doing it this way makes it feel like it's a light kayak. 
I knocked off on my caps and well, there she is. Knocked off my end cap. I hadn't had her on this cart in a while. Now I gotta finagle everything around so I can get my trailer back over here. All right, I'm gonna switch to GoPros and just start filming this process. I don't think I need to film step by step of me cutting each piece. I will, I guess, show you what I use to cut. I use a Harbor Freight, I think it's a Bauer cutter. And it's, it's not as good as I really want that evolution saw that doesn't shoot sparks or whatever. But I've got this, uh, this bad boy right here. And it does, it does all right for cutting. It just slings a lot of sparks. It throws, it's nothing but just a massive grind wheel that you just, you know, chop down on the metal and cut it. But anyway, let's switch to the GoPro, get this done, because I don't want to stretch this video out no longer than it needs to be. I need to get this thing built so we can do some fishing before it gets really cold outside. Good morning, guys. It is the next day. We actually got a lot of work done last night. Let me turn this heater off. The temperature dropped, so I came out here early this morning when I first got up and turned the heat on out here to kind of knock the chill off. But we got a lot done, and I'm fixing to walk you around kind of the progress that we got done yesterday on day one. And I'm kind of, you can kind of see behind me here, I'm mocking up the area where I told you guys I wanted to add the step. I dug out, I've got some of this mesh left over from an older project. Let me just turn the camera around. I'm gonna walk you around the trailer, show you the, the rack. We, I did finish the top water shelf or whatever you wanna call it, where we're gonna be mounting that rack and it's good to go. I've got everything kind of mocked up. I did slide the kite back on here last night, as you can see, because I wanna get some exact measurements this morning before I start cutting metal to build this new stepway. I'm gonna put this mesh down, a bunch of cool stuff. Let me show you guys, I'm gonna walk you through where we're at. And the goal for today, for day two, is to complete all of the cutting, grinding, and welding. Get all of that done, get the front step fabbed up. I'm relocating my tire, my spare tire holder, 
And I'm gonna, instead of bolting it on, I think I'm gonna cut the bracket down and actually weld it to the frame and kind of make it as clean as possible. And then by the end of this video, I don't have it here. I'm gonna have to go buy some, but I wanna get some truck bed liners, some, you know, the grip, the grippy stuff, the flat black stuff. I wanna go get me some of that because I would like to have this frame completely coat, oh, I can't talk this morning, completely coated with the truck bed liner today. That way, tomorrow, everything should be dry, I hope, if I kick this heater on all night, you know, out here and, and maybe kind of help dry everything. And then tomorrow, I can do the final touches with installing the ratchets, the wheels. I'm gonna, I am gonna swap the wheels from the other trailer. And I did some lights. So anyway, let me show you the lights I'm gonna go with too. And I think I'm gonna, y'all are probably gonna think I'm crazy for this, but I think I'm gonna mount the lights in the Yakima top water box on the bottom of it since it's angled. That way, if I take the box on and off, the lights and the battery, everything can kind of be con condensed inside the box. But anyway, let me show you really quick and then we're gonna get back to work with it. All right, so before I show you, I'm kind of got this fabbed up. I'll show you what that's gonna look like here in a minute. But here is the bracket and you'll see it better once we take the box back off. I just kind of mounted everything up really quick last night so I could make sure that all my measurements were good. And it worked out pretty good. I ended up not going flat, as you can see, the box is at an angle and I went with a 25 degree angle. If you guys are watching and wondering what angle I went with, if you're wanting to do this to yours, that is 25 degrees. And the way I built it is it comes off the frame and I actually bolted this to the frame instead of welding it. So this rack is removable, but I did it without drilling holes in the top. What I did was I just drilled holes in the bottom of this square tubing and into the frame, of course, and the bolts I actually were able to drop down in the hole from the inside. And I had these wrenches that were just long enough to go all the way through to hold the head while I put some uh, lock nuts on the bottom of it. And I got two down here and two down there. This way, once it's bolted on and I cap the ends down here, I've got these plastic caps that I use right here. I'm gonna cap this side paint everything and the only way to take this off will be to pop the cap off put a wrench in there hold that head of that bolt and take those nuts off from the bottom so it's bolted on pretty good and then i did put me some gussets here as you can see my welds aren't perfect but they don't look too bad i'm getting better at it but i've welded some gussets on both sides so this is just a straight 45 degree angle off the trailer straight up and then i came up to here and i stopped it this is 26 inches from the top of this up to here. And then I welded, and I've already ground all my welds flush here because I want it to look good when we paint. And then this bar is the 25 degree. So it's a straight 45 cut on this end. And this end I cut at 25. And that gave me a good angle for the rack. And you see, I still have complete room on my driver's side, completely open. So I'm gonna be able to lock everything down, rig up my boat. Nothing is over the top of my box. So I'm gonna be able to drop all of my rods into my black pack, just like I wanted to do. And nothing's gonna be in the way of me doing that. Should work out really good. I think it looks good on here. Now for the lights, I've got these lights in my shop and I'm not even sure where I got them, but I got a bunch of these lights and I think I'm gonna mount them. Let me turn it on. I'm powering everything right now with this Dakota Lithium Power Box 10. I use it to test all kinds of stuff here in the shop. But see, these are pretty freaking bright. And I think I've got four or five of these. And I'm thinking that I'm going to mount them right here. So if I put a, or, you know, probably maybe here. But if I put one here, one there, you know, four or five across the bottom of the box, since the box is angled, what I'll be able to do is condense all the wiring inside the Yakima box. And I don't even know if I've opened it to show you guys what the inside looks like, but it's just a big deep box. And there's enough room under the rods here, like the rods actually mount to these here. And there's enough room under it for me to run wires and then kind of tape everything down, get it how I want it. But that would just mean that I would have to put, you know, it sucks, but I would have to drill four holes or five holes they're not very big. I think the holes are gonna be like 3 8 inch, but I'll be able to put a small battery pack in there. And I've got some switches that are just like this actually. And I think that I could put a switch maybe 
right in here somewhere. So at the boat ramp, when I am rigging it, or you know it's dark, I can just reach up, tap a switch. That should give me plenty of light back here above the kayak to see what I'm doing, to make sure I'm not leaving anything. Because there have been times where I've left the boat ramp at night, left stuff just sitting on the kayak, and somehow it makes it all the way home because I didn't see it to you know grab it and stow it away in the truck or in the box or anything. So anyway, that's going to be the plan for that after the paint is done on the trailer. This is my plan for the front step that we're going to do today. This is the first project we're starting this morning because I want to get all the welding taken care of right out of the gate today. This is going to look kind of goofy. I, I get that. But what this is going to offer me is when I get out of my truck, usually if the boat ramp is really steep, like if I back down to a boat ramp and it's just a quick drop off, I have to, when I'm loading, when I'm Loading the kayak back on the trailer is when it's kind of the issue. I have to tight rope this frame. So I get out and I walk in this frame. I step over my winch system here. And then I got this little platform that I built when I first made the trailer that I can stand on. And then I stretch out, grab the kayak, and I pull it up onto the thing. Well, by adding this step right here and putting mesh on it, and I'm not just going to mesh this area. I'm going to mesh all the way down to here. So the mesh is going to cover this area and this area. And this should give me a great place to walk right up on and get onto the kayak. I should be able to take my foot, step it here, and then just have somewhere to actually stand. And it's going to make life so much easier. And I, I get that it's going to look weird, especially when the kayak's not on the trailer, because, you know, the trailer's got a nice form to it as it is. It kind of fits the the shape of my kayak really, I mean, really good. And it, it looks good, but this side will have this kick out when we get done today. And I think, I mean, it's not gonna look too bad. I'm gonna try to make it where it looks good, but I also want it to be functional for what we're doing this for. So yeah, that is the plan for today. So now let's get back to work. All right guys, so quick update on where we're at today. It's still day two. It's only about 4.35. Uh, we're doing good. I think all the cutting and welding is done. I'm gonna show you where we're at really quick. I made a Walmart run, so I've got everything I need here. Thank goodness that I, I'm gonna be able to get this thing painted and I'm gonna turn the heat on out here in the shop tonight. And hopefully in the morning when we get up, we can come out here and do all the finishing touches, mount the top water box, put the kayak back on the trailer, and the few more things that I wanna button up on this thing and, and put the straps and all on. But let me show you the trailer where we're at now. I just finished priming uh, certain areas, certain places that I ground down and welded up. I put some primer on those places. The rest of the trailer, I'm just gonna scuff up, uh, wipe it down with some acetone, and then we're gonna start rolling on this bed liner. But let me show you what I went and picked up for this thing. All right, first, I guess I'll show you the trailer. 
how she looks. So I got the platform on there and I told you guys, it looks kind of weird. Let me roll it over here in the light so y'all can see it. Looks kind of weird. Once it's painted black, it's not gonna look as bad, but it's a weird shape. <laughs> but once the, once the kayak's on here, we're gonna be able to just step up on there with no problem. I've already been on here and walked around and it holds my weight perfect, man. It's solid. I, I weld it all the way around. It is the inch and a half square tubing that we've used on everything else. And it's pretty level. It might have a slight bend to it. I'm trying to get it where it's nice and flush right there. You can see it. But that is welded up. So now we're gonna have a way to get up on here when I load and unload the kayak. And I'll show you the rack for the top water box. It turned out pretty good. Let me wheel it back here. So here's the rack. Here's the bag of stuff I went to Walmart to get. But it turned out pretty good. The box is gonna mount right up to it. I got everything kind of primed, all my corners where I had to grind down the welds. Everything's primed up. I'm in the process of kind of taping everything up. So what I'm gonna do now is I picked up some, I'll show you what I grabbed really quick. I picked up some truck bed liner, a bed coating. It's got the non-skid, so it should have that, you know, that grit stuff in it. So I got this, it's just a cord of it. And I got some of uh, the little rollers here that we're gonna roll. But I also grabbed two cans of the same stuff, but it's in a spray. And I'm gonna use the spray to get where I can't get with a roller. So I'll probably, go through and spray everything that I know I'm not gonna be able to roll, and then we'll roll everything else at the end. But before I start doing any painting, I did pick me up some fresh glue. I've been out of this for a while, and what I'm gonna do with the glue is, I love having the carpet on these bunks, by the way, versus, uh, you know, I've got the marine mat stuff on my other trailer that I'm testing out. If you watch that video, I built the bunks I built all my bunks out of the EMT. I think it's two inch EMT conduit. But on the other trailer, instead of running carpet like I did on this one, I've got marine mat strips running down the top. And when it's dry and the kayak's dry and the mat is dry, the kayaks do not want to slide as good, which is a good thing, you know, for going down the highway, but it's a sucky thing for being at the bottom of the boat ramp and you can't slide the kayaks off the, off the bunks as easy. So the carpet works fantastic, but I need to glue the carpet down some more. When I installed this, I ran out of glue, like I was pushing it on glue. So, um, and you're gonna see me do a little trick that I picked up. A guy on Instagram actually hit me up when I was doing this trailer and uh, told me a cool trick that I've been using to put carpet on these round EMT conduit bunks. And what you'll see me do is I'm gonna spray the back of this carpet really good with my 3M spray. This is the Super 77 I like to use but I'm gonna spray it down really good. And then I'm gonna take saran wrap. I got some heavy duty saran wrap and I'm gonna wrap these bunks really tight and let it sit overnight. And it'll actually help, you know, form the carpet back to, around the bunks and it'll be really good. And plus I'll be able to spray without having to worry about getting overspray on the bunks tonight. So anyway, that's it. It's about, let's see, it is quarter till five. So I should be able to get this completely painted tonight, pull the wheels off, pull the fenders off, and tomorrow when we come out here, hopefully it'll be dry and ready to rock and roll, finishing this thing up. What do y'all think so far? I'm happy with it. I think it's gonna look really good and it's gonna do everything that I need it to do. Y'all let me know what y'all think about these videos being longer too. I usually don't do these long videos like this. If you know me, you know, you follow the channel. I usually do like these 25 to 30 minute DIY videos. I want to try something different. I like doing these projects, but I usually try to clip it down to, you know, keep the video short. But this one, I figured I was going to do a long video, show you all the full process of everything I do for these builds. Even though this is kind of an older build and I'm kind of revamping a, an older trailer, but this is the kind of the process that I like to do. One step at a time, get everything done one step at a time and then by tomorrow, by the end of the video for you guys, but by tomorrow for me, I'll have a completed trailer with a rod box, a new way to load and unload. It's gonna work out great. So anyway, I'm gonna quit talking. We're gonna turn on some cheesy music again for you guys and get back to it.
this is all the time. Well, I do believe running the heater all night last night worked out pretty good because it is hot. Let's see how hot it is in here. It is, <laughs> look at this. It is 77 degrees in my garage right now. And I didn't think, I, I was gonna get cold last night, so I didn't think it would get that hot in here, but the paint is definitely, definitely dry. Oh man, I love that grip. I love having that bed liner on there. All right, so let's do a quick walk around because as you can see, it is day three and I've got a mess out here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna clean up this morning and I'm, you know, I'm not gonna film me cleaning up, of course, but I'm gonna get the shop cleaned up. I'm gonna pull the other trailer in here and we're gonna do the old switcheroo on the wheels so I can get this back down to a roller. But what do you guys think? I really like the grip on this. I usually don't paint these trailers with this bed liner, but I know a lot of companies are doing it now and it doesn't look bad and it helps hide any kind of blemishes, which I mean, you know, there's no blemishes right there. That's a clean weld. You can't even tell that was two pieces. I'm just joking. There are some boogered up welds on here, but I don't claim to be a professional trailer builder. What do you guys think so far? That step turned out great. It's a little goofy looking when the boat's not on here, but I think it's gonna work out so good for me to hop out of my truck, step up here. I can walk all the way to here and pull the kayak up onto the bunks from the water. These steep boat ramps, that's gonna come in really handy. I put ended up putting, I think, three coats of paint on this trailer. After I sprayed both cans, I sprayed both cans. Everywhere I couldn't get a roller, I sprayed. So the whole bottom side of this frame has been sprayed. I got on my back and sprayed it everywhere. I tell you, I spit up, let me fix the camera. I spit up so much paint last night because I didn't wear a mask. I thought since I just had two spray cans and uh, a roller, I, I could just knock it out really quick. I smelled horrible this morning. All I could smell was paint and I kept smelling burnt hair and I didn't know why, but look at this. Let's see if I can, y'all can even see it. Can y'all see my arm? Y'all see that burn? That is what happens if you weld without sleeves or a jacket on. So don't be like me. That uh, I'm burnt pretty good right there. I did wear the sleeves. Like, I don't know if it's in the footage or not. I, I haven't edited this video yet, but I did put some sleeves on, you know, when I was welding yesterday, but I did weld for a little while without sleeves, just a short, short sleeve shirt on. And I got a good burn. I mean, that's a, uh, that's, you get, if you didn't know, if you don't weld, if you, uh, if you get into welding, make sure you get you a jacket and wear the right stuff, or you can get a pretty serious sunburn just from the arc of that. That's not from like sparks hitting it. That's just from the light. It's just like getting a sunburn. But anyway, let me clean this garage up really quick. I think it turned out great. We're going to add some lights. I'm going to put some ratchet straps on here. And when I was going to bed last night, I had some more ideas. This camera keeps shutting my screen off had some more ideas of how we're gonna hook up some new strap systems on here. I'm gonna use the same ratchet straps that I have on the other trailer, the wider straps. And I think we're gonna add some tie hooks and or some, you know, bolts on here with some, uh, what are they, tie down spots or whatever. I'm gonna add those on here so it'll be easier for me to uh, strap and unstrap from one side of the trailer without having to walk around. Because currently, you know, you have to loosen the straps on one side walk around, unhook them on the other side, and then walk back around and retract the straps. I'm gonna try to get it so I can do everything from one side one side of the trailer, excuse me. Anyway, let me get this shop cleaned up. We're gonna pull the other trailer in here and start putting this thing back together. We'll have a brand new trailer here in about five minutes, I think, for you guys anyway. All right, I forgot how big <laughs> that trailer actually is. That that double jet ski trailer, it just barely fits into my garage doors. The width of it is so wide, but it does fit. But I got it in here. We're gonna do a little swapping around really quick. I'll show you the wheels that we're swapping out. Turn the camera around. 
So these are the ones that I ran on my single trailer, which they're, they're great, don't get me wrong, I really like them. I picked these out whenever we built the single trailer, but then last year when we built this double trailer, I picked these out, and I kind of really like the way this gray matches my Tacoma. So we're just gonna do a quick little swap this morning, and I'm also gonna go ahead and steal these ratchet straps, a pair of these off the trailer, because I, I forgot to order them. So I'm gonna put them on this trailer and then order me a replacement set to stick back on that trailer. And yeah, there's the old banana boat guys, keeping her in storage on the backyard on this trailer because I run out of room in my garage because I got so much junk in here. But what do y'all think about me pulling the trailers around the property with the old 1990 Easy Go Marathon golf cart? Look what I did to it. The whole cart is just run off of that one little bitty battery. <laughs> I'm just joking. I built this for it. That's what's running this car. And I got a video coming. So I uh, had to wait on my last package. It came in yesterday. There's the box right there. I'm fixing to do a video on where we're going to build this thing out a little bit more. I kind of hit on it last year or year and a half ago when I first got this thing and started to restore it as kind of a camping cart, but it's turned into kind of a trailer cart. I use it to haul stuff around here on the property. It does good at pulling these little trailers around. But anyway, that's, that's a video coming. So if y'all want to see how I repowered that old cart, and it's not hard to do. You can pick these golf carts up off Facebook Marketplace for almost nothing, you know, when the batteries are bad. And then I'm gonna show you guys in that video how you can convert it to a single 36 volt or 48 volt battery lithium, and it just completely, re you know, revitalizes that old, old golf cart. And you got a good thing to kind of ride around your yard, ride around the property. And I think it'll go like 28 miles an hour now. So it'll, it'll move, it'll pop a wheelie when I just get in there by myself if I floor it. But anyway, let's get back to the trailer stuff because it's early. I still got a good bit to do today, but we're in the home stretch now, guys. All right, y'all, the kayak trailer is finally finished. This is actually Monday. I spent most of the night last night kind of buttoning up some stuff and running some wires. I kept having these ideas and I just knocked it out last night. I really wanted to make sure it was complete by the end of this video to share it with you guys. So you're gonna see some lights that I wired up last night pretty late. I uh, added a switch. I've got these lights that are gonna shine down on the kayak, hopefully and light up the entire kayak so those late night boat ramp visits or when I'm rigging up in the dark somewhere, I'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing and I'll be able to have a switch to turn them on, turn them off. It turned out pretty cool, I'm really proud of it. So I'm gonna give you guys a full walk around. I did pull out in the backyard because it should be dark here in about an hour and I wanna get a little bit of footage to see how bright these lights that I added are really gonna help. You know, I, I'm pretty confident, I tested them out in the garage last night, but there was still a good bit of light in the garage that I couldn't kill. So out here, it's gonna be dark. I've got no lights back here on the back side of my property. So once it gets dark, I'll turn on the lights, light up the whole kayak, hopefully, see how well it does, and I'll add that footage at the end of the video. But for now, I'm gonna walk you guys through this full build. Everything's finally done. I'm happy with it. I really, I'm proud of the way it turned out. The functionality is the main thing I was worried about is I wanted to be able to haul the rods. I also wanted an area to be able to climb on and off to load and unload by myself. That way I'm not blocking up a bunch of people at the bottom of a boat ramp, like I said earlier. So anyway, without further ado, let me walk you guys through my DIY kayak trailer. All right, so starting up here at the front, I kind of want to give you guys an idea. See how I have this just sticking off far enough. 
it's not so far that it's like out of the, it's sticking way out past the, the kayak here, but it's just enough where I can walk up, step my foot on, if I can film this with this camera, stand right here. I've got just enough room to be able to stand here and then rig up, pull the kayak up, and I'll be able to walk all the way back there like I showed you earlier in the video when we were building it. Uh, the paint turned out really good. This is that bed liner that I used. It turned out amazing, actually. And I'm, I'm just loving the way it turned out. So last night I added these two inch straps. These are the same ones I did on my other kayak trailer, the dual kayak trailer that we built last year. They work out great. I got them on Amazon and I'll link most of the stuff that you see here is all gonna be linked in the video description. I ended up swapping my wheels to these. Now I got both sets of wheels from wreckstuff.com. I'll have a link for them in the video description. And if you go back to my trailer build videos, and I'll have all those videos linked below too, but I got partnership with these guys for both of those videos. And I think I've got promo codes that are still active. If y'all want to, you know, get yourself some nice wheels and tires for your kayak trailer, your bass boat trailer, there you go. Check out the links below. Got the other strap back here. Here's how it looks from the back. I did it so that the box doesn't stick too far over. Why is my camera crooked like that? I gotta get used to this gimbal here. All right, sorry, I'm trying to get used to working this gimbal. I'm trying to make the, this walk around shot pretty smooth and I'm not quite used to handling this thing yet. But as you can see, I got it where the box don't stick out too far. I didn't want it out way back here beside where the kayak is. I've got my poles in in here. My kayak stops just past the post. And then my box is way up here. I think the box is a little over eight feet long. So it fits on the side really well. What I ended up doing for the tie down on this side, I kind of changed my mind. I was gonna do two different straps and kind of connect them in the middle so that all I had to do was unhook from one side of this kayak when I got to the boat ramp but I ended up changing my mind and these tabs that I welded on when I built this frame, they're just, I think they're an eighth inch thick maybe and they're 45s and I used them as gussets for here and here. Well, I was actually able to drill me a hole and I got me a, a heavy duty buckle and then I just reach over, clip my ratchets on that and then I can ratchet them down from the other side. Pulls the kayak down really good. Here's a shot from this side. I got the spare mounted right beside the winch. Now, let me show you the box. I'm so proud of this box, man. It turned out so good. I can still get to stuff on this side of the kayak while it's on the trailer, which is good. I thought that this would be in the way, having it low like this. And I mean, it kinda is. I still have to walk around to get some things, but I can still clearly get to this side of my seat and stuff like that with no problems. But let me find my keys. So these top water boxes, they take a key, right here, if I can do this while holding a camera. There we go, so I had it locked. Now you turn it all the way this way and you can unlock it. And it's not just one lock here, it's actually three total. So you got one down here, one right here, and then one, where's it at, right here. Here's eight fishing rods in here, and I still have tons of room under here for tackle. I mean, there. this is huge, there's probably six or eight inches from the bottom of these rods to this floor. So you can actually put tackle boxes and stuff like that in there. I don't know if I'll do that. This is just gonna be mainly for hauling my fishing rods. I may add some bags or something that I can Velcro to the bottom to haul extra stuff one day. But for now, this is just for hauling rods. Now, something cool I did add, let's see if I can, I'm still learning this gimbal. I can hang it way up under there. See that light I installed? Oh, you can see it. So I got a light that I found on Amazon. And when you turn it on, it actually throws a pretty good bit of light. I've, I was gonna do three of them in here, but I didn't want overkill and have wires hanging down everywhere. But the light is actually pretty bright. Let's see if I can, there you go. And it's, I think it's an eight inch light or a 10 inch light. So it, it's gonna give me plenty of light to be able to get rods in and out of this box. So that is the light that I added on the inside. I've got the top water box mounted down solid to this bracket that I built. But let me show you these other lights. First, I'll show you the battery. I've got all this kind of running. So I didn't wire any of this to the kayak trailer at all. Now, all of this is self-contained in this box. I've got a little lithium battery right there. If you guys can see that. Yeah, and it's super lightweight. And all I did was I put Velcro on the back of the box 
and on the back of the battery and it literally just it's not coming off you gotta you gotta pull really hard to get this battery to budge at all so i got everything kind of wired up right here that battery powers this inside light that i can turn on by itself it's got a push button of its own i don't have to have anything else turned on for it to work but check this out this is the cool thing that i added so first i'll show them to you with them off see these little hidden lights i've got here i've got one on the corner this light should throw me plenty of light to the back back here for at night when i'm taking the motor off or i'm putting the motor on in the dark back here that should give me plenty of light to do that i've got a light here that should give me plenty of room to be able to get in and out of my battery box back here that's going to actually shine perfectly down in there so if i need to disconnect a battery or something like that i'll have no problems with that light this light right here and i did it evenly so i was i'm really anal about stuff like that so it is done evenly but that light is going to be perfect right here for me to be able to shine the light down in here so if i got to get down in this box i can get down into it and that light at night it's going to give me plenty of plenty of light on this trailer and i got one more right here on the corner to match the one in the back that's going to throw just enough light back here if i need to unhook my graphs or any you know if i'm wiring or up here in this front hatch i should have plenty of light there with just those four lights and i don't know if you saw it or not let me get this gimbal back straight come on now I'm trying to learn every time i turn it it kind of goes a different way i'm trying to learn how to okay there we go so right here i've got a little switch and this is a marine grade switch i just i've got a bunch of them i keep in a drawer from amazon but if you turn it on you see the little light come on and then there's all four of my lights now right now it don't look like much but they are super super bright i mean you're not going to be able to tell even my me doing that right now but those four lights should really light up my rig so i should have no issues at all rigging up in the dark and like i said i'm going to leave my truck and trailer out here after i'm done with this outro with you guys so the very end of this video I'm going to add some footage of it in the dark. I'm going to leave it out here till it gets dark. So we'll be able to see exactly how much light I'm going to get off of those four, four little LED bulbs that are shining down. But what do you guys think about the trailer? Is there anything else that I should have added that I didn't add? Now, I don't, this was, I, this trailer is built for practicality of solo launching. So y'all keep that in mind. If, you know, storage boxes, I really don't need them. You know, I've got, I've got a ton of storage. I've got a diamond back now on the back of my truck where I literally have a ton of storage back here. If you didn't see the diamond back video, y'all need to check it out. I built, I've got my hunting stuff back here right now, but I've got plenty of storage. I've got the diamond back molly panel up here with, I've even got fishing tackle there for bugging out for ponds and stuff, but I don't, so I know some of you guys were, you should add a tongue box or, or a side box. I don't need any more storage. The only storage that I actually needed was the rod storage, which that is taken care of with that Yakima top water box. I absolutely love this setup. So y'all definitely hit me up in the comments below and let me know what you think about this. If you like it, tell me. If you don't like it or if I did something that you would have done different, let me know what you think. If there's something that I should have put on here and you, you think I'm really missing out by not having it on here, let me know in the comments. I love getting feedback from you guys. And also let me know what you think about this style video format, this longer format. You know, you guys that follow me, you know that I usually don't do these longer DIY builds. I usually do like a short 15, 20 minute video with you guys. I'm wanting to extend them. I want to go through the full process of these builds. And as a matter of fact, I've got another build coming up that I want to walk you guys through like this one. So if enough of you guys actually like these longer videos where you can follow every step of the process that I do, make sure you like, let me know in the comments, hit the like button on the video, share the video. It really helps boost me up to know that I'm doing the right thing when I'm making these videos and this content for you guys. But I've got a video plan that I want to do very soon. I'm getting all the materials together now where I want to build a camping trailer, not not necessarily an overland camping trailer, but a, just a camping trailer that we can convert a utility trailer and add a rooftop tent, an awning, a pull-out kitchen, a water storage area. I want to add a bunch of stuff to a small trailer 
and do it all DIY style. So you guys can kind of follow along or help me out, you know, with the process of the build. So let me know what you guys think about that idea. I upload every Monday at six o'clock, guys. So if you're not following or subscribed, make sure you subscribe. If you want to support me, be sure you hit that join button right up under the video. You can become a member of the channel here. It's five bucks a month and it helps me kind of create content and make these videos for you guys. And that's going to do it for this week's video. Stay tuned if you want to see the dark footage. Once the sun drops, I'm going to get some B-roll and see how much light these guys are actually putting off. And yeah, that's going to do it, guys. I upload every Monday at 6 p.m. So make sure you jump here, uh, <laughs> jump on the channel next Monday at 6 p.m. for the new video. Thanks for watching.